Hello everyone, I'm Mariana and I'm working with Culture Goes Europe in this international project called Inside Out, where we are talking about outdoor education. Today we are interviewing Irina, she is a youth worker and a trainer uh, based in Norway, so we hope we can all learn something from her and her work. Thank you for listening. Hello, Irina. <laughs> Uh, hi, hi. To, to welcome you to this uh, interview. Uh, we are working with Culture Goals Europe, it's a non-governmental non, uh, organization, and we are doing research regarding outdoor education, and especially with migrants and refugees, young people. And uh, we, we know that you are a youth worker and a trainer, and uh, uh, we thought that it would be really useful to have your uh, ideas, your expertise, your insights in this in this topic. So I would start by asking you maybe to introduce a little bit about yourself and uh, in what regards does your work relate to, to this outdoor education topic? Mm -hmm. Yes, my name is Irina. I'm working, uh, I'm Ukrainian. After the war, I uh, moved to Norway and recently I'm working with uh, refugees in a local refugee center. I'm living in Volda, it's a small town uh, for 6,000 people. And uh, at the moment we have already um, almost three, 300 Ukrainians here, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot. And um, I work, uh, I have an NGO and I'm working with uh, um, integration into Norwegian society and into Norwegian way of living and life and so on. <laughs> um, and as uh, outdoor is a big part of Norwegian culture, this mm -hmm. is the life of people here when I live in mountains. Uh, and for most of Ukrainians and other refugees, for example, from Syria, from Afghanistan, it's not that common. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a big work. <laughs> but um, introducing them to uh, this outdoor culture, it gives a chance for them to become more Norwegians faster. Let's say <laughs> it's, it, this is the way <laughs> to to become here a, a local. Let's say. And uh, yeah. uh, what would you say is the the benefits of? this outdoor living of this outdoor education how how does it benefit uh, refugees uh, and also migrants and even norwegians right everyone <laughs> <laughs> yes oh i can say that uh, for me what i work uh, like last half a year and the thing that the result that i see last maybe half a year or maybe even more um uh, the first thing, this is a mental health, mm. because all type of outdoor activities is like really, this is a necessary thing to have a good mental health, uh, especially for refugees, especially, especially for migrants who are in a new country, new environment, new maybe weather or food, everything is different. So. Uh, go go into the nature and doing anything outdoor. It can, can be just walking around, which is a big part of Norwegian culture. Um, and Norwegians in Norwegian languages, uh, it sounds like go for tour, go for a walk okay. without any uh, go tour. It's without any goal. You just go out and you just walk in the nature. Okay. Uh, this is a very classical things to do in every free time that you have. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this is a, a very good thing for mental health and mm -hmm. for our region. Uh, that's how this is the activity that you can do together with locals mm -hmm. or together with other migrants. So uh, this is the, the second thing that the benefits are. You can get new friends. Um, Mm -hmm. Just but there are also nice talk. Yeah, there are also some uh, challenges, right, uh, with regards to uh, engaging people in this type of activities, or also some barriers that, in terms of uh, uh, how how 
where to go, how to go, with which materials to go. Um, how how do do you face these these barriers in your work? Um, yes, you are right. <laughs> there is a lot of barriers, and ex uh, especially with people who came from the big cities, they didn't get used to trees and uh, mountains and um, forests, <laughs> lakes, and so on. And um, first, um, I think the first thing, the first, let's say, to break this wall and then everything goes better is first time. You just need to take people out for a few hours to make a bonfire, to cook together, to walk, to have a nice talk and just nice time. And then people like it, like maybe 80% like it. Maybe there is 20% that will anyway say, okay, it's not my thing. <laughs> but mostly people like it, even uh, during the rain and uh, during bad weather, because for our region, we have a lot uh, changing weather. And uh, we have this say that uh, there is no bad weather, there is a <laughs> wrong clothes. <laughs> or in our region, we say, if you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes, and then it's changed <laughs> a lot. And uh, yes, uh, we need some equipment to do some activities. Uh, we start always with uh, clothes, because you have to have a proper clothes. And uh, yeah, like basically rain jackets. This is the first thing to have arriving to Volda, to our region. And uh, good shoes. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the first thing that you will need to have to mm -hmm. join. And uh, um, in our research, we realized, for, for example, for the Began uh, municipality, uh, it's one of the municipalities that uh, have this uh, uh, free rental um, possibility uh, also for the students. There is this free rental possibility for the Bergen Student Sports Organization, our no, sports students organization. So um, is this also something that, uh, uh, for example, this organization relies on, like the services um, that are organized and you can uh, share resources? How, how do, you, do you work with this? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we have a great uh, uh, organization that calls BUA. This is a project of, uh, um, like, it's not, I think it's all around Norway, but uh, every commune is uh, separate. They have their own, uh, let's say, it's a rental of equipment that calls mm -hmm. BUA. And this is for free. This is uh, financed by governmental uh, this is a governmental project, let's say. Mm -hmm. So it uh, comes from the budget comes from the cultural department uh, of uh, our community. And uh, yes, this is a great thing that uh, actually, thanks to this uh, organization and to this service, we can do everything that we do. Mm -hmm. Because if people just arrive and some of them just sitting at home they are afraid to go out because it's rain or cold they didn't get used to it uh, for example they came from africa and for them it's quite cold and like rain yes and then we can just say okay we can borrow rain pants rain jacket and good shoes in this bua and then we go for a little hike together we show them the easy way here nice walk and then we do some frying some sausages on a bonfire. Mm -hmm. And then they say, okay, it's not that scary. It's even nice. <laughs> so for them, it's like a good start. And uh, for winter activities, uh, there is a lot of uh, things to borrow, like skis and uh, like cross country skis and slalom skis, sledges, ice skates, uh, whatever you can need. Even this snowshoes, just to walk on the deep snow to have a uh, small hikes backpacks uh, all pots and like everything sleeping mats sleeping bags yeah that's, it's very that's, nice yeah, that's a awesome uh, opportunity and uh, do you think uh, it it reaches uh, all the the groups that it could reach or uh, is it targeted to uh, for example uh, specific groups so for example uh, anyone uh, can come up and and rent if it's a uh, 17 year old uh, <laughs> for example yes 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 yes, yes. 
Is it yes, worth everybody it? who who have Norwegian number, or even if you don't have any number, you can go a get do a guest account and just borrow things. Even if you are small kids, uh, kid uh, eight years old or ten years old, you can even come alone and wow. have uh, your mom's phone mm -hmm. number, and then she have to confirm it via SMS or email if you have the information. Mm -hmm. Then you can come with this uh, paper written from your mom with, <laughs> with all the information in the system, and then you can you can. Have have everything mm -hmm. and uh, this is especially for kids for school kids and mm -hmm. very often schools are coming with full classes because they have some outdoor days yeah. so this is gives opportunity to ice skate for example when the weather is good here in Volda uh, we have uh, this uh, ice outside of the school and then uh, a lot of school kids are coming and they're renting the ice skates and they can mm -hmm. ice skate and then ice skates comes together with a helmet just safety okay. first perfect yes mm -hmm. okay so so schools do it uh you also go with groups to the nature right is, is this group yes, yes. Um, more of children, more uh, adults? Is it families? What is the typical group with who you work? Um, everybody. Like, it's, it's sometimes schools. Sometimes it's families who are, um, for example, renting uh, for family trips some equipment and then some uh, big the things uh, called tool for, for the uh snowy days when mm -hmm. you can just go on a snow with uh, with uh, skis and have your baby in this special uh um. tool. <laughs> Yes, and then uh, it's for families, of course, and we have a lot of this uh, things to carry baby on your back mm -hmm. uh, to go hiking. So this is actually for everyone and for international students and for Norwegian students that are coming with big groups and going uh, uh, together, yeah, hiking mm -hmm. and to local people using it as well mm -hmm. and adults and kids, everyone. And with the specifically with the refugees and, and migrants that you also work, um, do you see some uh, long time engagement? Is it uh, something that usually people go once, twice, and then okay, I already know how it is. Now I will go by myself or not go at all. Or is it something that it's people still feel engaged and continue going, and you see the the benefits on the long run? Uh, you mean if uh, after our events people go on their own uh, on small hikes? For example. Yes, it's yes, it happens a lot, and I am really happy when I hear stories that like three of us uh, change uh, exchange of numbers when we were on your event, and then we went three of us on some uh, trips, and I see some uh, stories on the Facebook that those people got new friends, the new experience uh, they do continue doing those things without us. <laughs> yes, it's happened. Oh, great. Uh, I think you froze for a little bit. Maybe it's my problem or is it yours? I wait. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yes, let me check. Do I have a uh, full uh, internet? Okay. Me too. And you're back. Now you're... is it okay? Yes. Where, 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 where do was, they froze? It was the end. <laughs> the end of the, the answer. <laughs> so it was perfect. I I managed okay. to listen to to all of you were saying. And I wanted to ask you uh, another thing. Um, it's it because now you're working already in this organization that has the services that is engaging people in outdoor education. But what would be the advice? To these other organizations, to these other services that are still not incorporating outdoor education, what, how, how could these organizations start doing it? What would be the, the starting point? Uh, you mean for those organizations, for example, NGOs who are not using outdoor at the moment? Exactly. From where to start? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the best way uh, is on uh, your local level to find some organization who are already doing this and just uh, cooperate 
because I believe that only in uh, coming together and cooperation, you can get the best energy and the best results because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can exchange best, best practices, you can exchange participants and members and it's great. And um, yes, I think this is the best way to do it. So you can join it uh, a few times and then you can if you feel confident you can try to do something little mm -hmm. just improve them do it a bit bigger longer more difficult more challenging <laughs> yes but i believe that the cooperation on a local level this is the first thing to do mm -hmm. this is uh, the greatest thing to do mm -hmm. yes does does Bua, uh have uh, other organizations with uh, who they work uh, of course, uh, BUA, this is organization uh, that are uh, in the center of Volda. This mm -hmm. is open for everyone. In um, It's uh, work three days a week. Uh, it have two and a half or three working hours, mm -hmm. uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then everybody can come and just borrow equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so actually all organizations are working with BUA. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody who wants to go outdoor and who doesn't have equipment. Mm -hmm. But um, even if you have some equipment, but you want to organize outdoor for more people, most likely you will always need one more shoes or one more person doesn't have a rain jacket. So you always last moment run to BUA and say, hey guys, do you have one more jacket? <laughs> So everybody is safe and uh, everybody have a proper equipment. So this is not the, the BUA, this is organization for everyone mm -hmm. from government to provide, to make an outdoor activities uh, open for literally everybody, mm -hmm. All right. any age. Yeah. Yes. yes. So synergy, uh, benefits, everyone together. Uh, long, long time, long run uh, uh, benefits, uh, continuing the activities after starting by trying. <laughs> so these are the main, main key yeah. points that uh, I think we can take from mm -hmm. what you said. And um, I just wanted to thank you for uh, coming, for the expertise, for the information. 